and baby boys. Yes, yes, so hell is here. Today we have Diana Ankudinova with her performance of This Is A Man's World. This is her second performance on the show You Are Super. She was 14 years old at the time. And the show is for children who spent a large portion of their childhood without parental care. This song, it's actually called It's A Man's 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 World by James Brown in the mid 60s. What a song, short and sweet. It's old school funk, classic soul. James Brown's voice is very, very recognizable, very iconic, it has that husky sound, kind of like a pained sound. I can see Diana suiting this song, singing it very well. She has a naturally lower register for a woman. She's by definition a contralto. So depending what key she's in, she could be needing to kind of strain in her chest voice to sing the higher parts. And it also depends on the arrangement. We saw with my last Diana reaction, which was Last Dance, Dernière Danse. Go check out my reaction to that if you haven't already card up here. With that, the arrangement was not changed much compared to the original song. Whereas in Diana's performance of Wicked Game, for example, that was a completely different Different arrangement. Diana could take many approaches with this one. The original song doesn't really have any long melodic sung phrases, so based on that there might not be that much opportunity for us to hear that famous polyphonic sounding voice of hers, but she might take a completely different approach, maybe slow it down a bit, I don't know. So I think let's just get straight into it and find out. Igor Krutoy has conceded to the green buzzer. It's a short performance, so let's just go straight to the end and then we'll go over the analysis afterwards. This is, this is fun. One of the judges nearly forgot to press the buzzer there. Yeah, I mean, great performance, isn't it? Great song, great performance. A lot to talk about. I think she did some great things there. Yeah, I mean, let's just get into it. Talk about the arrangement a bit and, and what she did with her singing. So firstly, she is singing in a different key to the original, but only slightly. She's actually singing a bit lower than James Brown was. We can see at the end of the opening chords. Versus... So James Brown is here, and Deanna is here. So she's just one semitone below. So then the violin parts would in turn be slightly different. This is what they'd be like in contrast. In Deanna's performance, we get this. 
in James Brown's original song we get this. Overall, the arrangement is very similar to the original song. There's not that much different to it. So unless something is really different, I won't mention it. She is performing at a quicker tempo though. Diana's performance is around this. Whereas James Brown is more around this. Not a huge difference, but it is noticeable. It means Diana has a bit less time on the notes that she sings, maybe because of the show's time constraints, so it helps to make the overall performance a bit shorter. Let's listen to those opening chords again. Listen how much slower they are in the original versus Diana's, which are quite quick now. A lot quicker. Here, a great example of her great stage presence. She's dressed quite cool in a suit. There's a spotlight on her. She's facing away from everyone. And then she turns around to walk towards the audience. We're already engaged with her performance and she has not even started to sing yet. That is the sign of a true natural born performer. So then we get her first vocal entry. She chooses to go for like a growl sound on her very, very first notes. This is a man's and then she chooses to pause before singing the word world. This pause really exaggerates the quick vibrato, the voice wobbling that she's utilizing either side of the pause on the words man's and world. So then the next phrase, I think it really demonstrates that this performance as a whole, it's definitely less about kind of great music formality, you know, singing every note perfectly in tune beautifully. It's not about that. It's more about the show itself, giving people a good show. She's loving it. The audience is loving it. It's a very energized performance. And it's a feisty performance, as we'll see in this next phrase. Because the ratio of time spent not singing to time spent singing is quite large, the short amount of time that she does spend singing, it needs to have something else. So she is quite dramatic. She's extra dramatic with it. And even though she's performing in a lower key than James Brown's original song, that doesn't mean she's singing lower than James Brown on the higher notes. On that nothing we just heard, where she's again opting for a kind of growly sound. And this time she chooses the growl on the top note of the phrase compared to the bottom note of the opening phrase. But at the same moment in the song, James Brown sings this. Nothing. Which is this note here. B flat. If we transpose that performance into Diana's key, then it would be this note. Diana sings this note. So she's making the most of her range. She's singing higher than James Brown was. And she's increasing the length of the melisma, the vowel sound. She's using multiple notes on it at the end of the word. Compared to She's doing this to show the judges her voice. She needs to add in more singing wherever she can because of the nature of the song. So a bit further on, we do hear a little bit of that kind of polyphonic element to her voice on the lower karma phrases. Just a bit, just a bit. But this performance is not about that compared to some of the other performances we've seen. And then the next two phrases, these two phrases are going back to what we were saying earlier about this performance not being perfect technical musicality. Let's have a listen. It's quite, well, not that. But that's what makes this performance so soulful, so electric. Earlier we saw how she treated the word nothing. We get this word again now. That seems to be one of the key words of this song, a powerful word. It was actually this moment from the original song I used as one of the clips in the introduction to demonstrate James Brown's voice. It's at this point where he does go very high. That's an F sharp to a D sharp in that unique voice of his. Notice how different that sounds to a regular man singing those notes. <laughs> Diana's top note is lower. She starts on this C. She then rises slightly above it to begin this descending crazy downwards pattern which causes Igor to buzz. Again, 
Again, it's not musically perfect, but it's full of soul and passion, and she's putting on a great show, especially for someone at that age, 14 years old. Such emotional maturity. And I like how on these words, it would be nothing without a woman or a girl, where it cuts from Diana, the girl, <laughs> to, I guess, her adoptive mother? Let's find out. Yeah, so that looks like it's her mother or adoptive mother. And on this phrase, a woman or a girl, Diana has adjusted the melody. In the original, at this point, if we transpose it into the same key Diana is singing, it would sound like this. Diana instead goes, she uses fewer notes and a slightly bigger range. And in using fewer notes, she naturally has to jump around more. So all these decisions that she's making to change the original melody, they all work nicely together. And at this point as well, we suddenly get something that is significantly different to the original. It's the arrangement. The most noticeable difference is a hemiola. If you've seen my other videos where I mention this technique, it's nearly always having three beats played in the space of two beats. For example, instead of one, two, you get one, two, three. In this case, the music in the background is doing it the other way around. It's making us think one, two, one, two. instead of the usual one, two, three, one, two, three that we get throughout the rest of the song. It's quite a drastic difference, especially with the lights behind Diana that come on in time with this hemiola, which is interesting because it's at this moment where Diana is very calm, cool, and collected. She's walking slowly across the stage. So we have the two sides, this drastic change, and then Diana suddenly calm. They seem to be opposite. It's interesting, it's different. And in these two lines that she sings here, we see a good display of various different vocal techniques that she's implementing. We get that growl sound we hear, we get a yodel-like break off at the end of the first phrase. And then in the next phrase, we get a smooth voice with no vibrato, no voice wobbles. Completely different to the quick vibrato we heard earlier. And baby boys. And then a bit after that, we got something that I thought was very interesting. It's an example of this playful kind of half talking, half singing. And she has this little laugh at the end, which makes it seem a bit more like talking or shouting. You know that man makes money? <laughs> but it's very clearly a tune that she is singing. And then just after that, we see another nice difference in the arrangement. I really like it. So in the original, at the point I'm about to play, we get these plucked pizzicato strings in the higher register. Money to buy. But we don't get that in Diana's performance. Instead, we get the strings first in the higher register, then moving in gradually to the lower register instruments with this descending chromatic line. To me, this is much more dramatic, and then we get the brass instruments coming in, kind of like James Bond. And again, she sings the word nothing, super soulfully, energetic. To finish, she's really, really feeling the music. And then after she's finished performing, the camera stays on her, she's so happy. She's built to perform. It warms you inside seeing her that happy after a performance like that. All green buzzers. Yeah, I mean, great song, great performance. Again, it's just quite astounding how at 14 years old she can put on a show like that. And I like how this one was not about technical perfection. It was just about feeling the music while still showing off a lot of what she's capable of. Yeah, all round great performance. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Would appreciate a like and subscribe. If you enjoy my content, want to support me, vote on future polls, you can do so by joining the Patreon or YouTube membership linked below in the description. And I will see you next time.